Hi, hi everyone. Hi, Product School. So my name is uh, Diana Martins, and I'm here today to talk to you a bit about the importance and challenge of a platform product manager. So first of all, it's really a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I think it's a, a great opportunity to, to be part of this community and kind of share a little bit some um, some sharing, some knowledge also really to, to be part of this kind of culture of product discipline and methodology. So really, really a pleasure to, to be here. So for, for today, um, I bring two main topics of the agenda. First one, it's really about what is a platform and its importance. And the second part will be more related about what are the challenges that as a platform product manager we usually found and how to tackle those, or actually, should I say, how to try to tackle those. And first things first, and, and allow me to uh, introduce myself uh, properly. So I'm, um, I'm working as a lead product manager for uh, Farfetch uh, in the platform solution. So Farfetch is a global platform for luxury that basically connects uh, creators, curators, and customers. And uh, I've been working in this kind of product area for almost four years. And before uh, I had work in the, um, in the telco company, in the telco industry, so also in the product area. So uh, I guess it has been quite, quite a journey um, in, in this product management area. So starting with, uh, with the, the point that um, is more interesting and the reason why we are here today, um, I guess let's start really for the, the, with the basics and what is a platform and its importance. And probably when we think about a platform, we can have kind of this kind of idea about really um, a platform that we are usually found in the in the pools or kind of in the sea and it's something that elevates us and allow us to jump it's also something that probably can allow us to have a broader view of the world kind of have kind of a holistic view of everything and i think we would be satisfied if someone says this is a platform i think we would all uh, of course agree on the other hand and um, we can also think about something like this. So a train station where we have kind of platform eight and nine. In this case, we are in the A area, it seems. And we have kind of all the elements that are part of the platform. So we have kind of the, the food machine, we have the clock, we have kind of the, the structure and the iron structure. But at the same time, we have kind of two main players. We have kind of us. The, the people that are waiting for the train and that are kind of waiting for something to happen and to take action to, uh, in this case, to go to somewhere. And we have kind of the train that will basically drive us to somewhere. And it's basically kind of the, the way uh, of transportation that we are waiting. So the other part when we think about platform and that probably um, it's um, something that comes always to mind when, uh, when we are uh, thinking about platform in a more tech perspective um, are these kind of icons. Um, and first thing when you look to, into these icons is that there are clearly some patterns in terms of design, in terms of colors, in terms how, how they are, these are kind of adapt to a modern customer. But of course, I think here we can extrapolate uh, that there are, there are a lot of platforms. There are some exchange platforms, of course, that are very related with uh, communication or with kind of content platforms. And then we have kind of uh, the maker platforms where we can think about kind of some um, content platforms as, as the YouTube or the Instagram. But we can also think about even open sources. Uh, platforms as for example the android so how can we connect dots from jumping into the first platform that were really elevating ourselves into kind of a normal platform that 
is part of our daily lives when we go to work um, and how can we connect with this kind of platform world that is everywhere that probably when we look into our phone we have three four platforms probably in the main screen and at the same time in the news um, we we can see any and kind of update without having the world platform attached. So really trying to connect the dots in between this, um, we can say that really that a platform is kind of a business model that really creates um, this uh, value by facilitating the change between two or more interdependent groups. And usually these groups are the consumers and obviously the producers. So when we're talking about the train, we were saying that people are waiting for the train. So we have kind of the, the consumer that is the one that is waiting for that service that the train will have. And we have kind of the producer that is the train that will drive us somewhere. And if we go very quickly to kind of the, the Facebook or kind of the YouTube example, we can uh, the, take as example that Obviously, in the YouTube, we have kind of the videos producers and the content and the content creators for those videos. And at the same time, we have um, uh, us uh, that are kind of consuming and hearing that music. So we can say, obviously, that a platform is kind of when the economic value of every value that uses it kind of exceeds the value of that company that created it and that's a platform and i'm really quoting bill gates here but i guess it represents um this kind of change that really is more than uh, the sum of the parts and that's quite kind of mind-blowing when we think about uh, what this represents in terms of change uh, and this is really a big picture change because if if in the past we were thinking, and even today, of course, there are still a lot of business models that really um, are kind of uh, using this traditional value chain where kind of uh, each value creation is very linear. And in one way, what we see in a platform ecosystem is that the value is created in two ways and really continues along the way. So there are some bits here and um, I will touch those as well a little bit um, in the second part that we need to, to see uh, really as kind of um, the main factors that empower the value of the platform. And the, the main one will be uh, really connected with this network effect. So as we were saying, there are always kind of at least two user sites that create this content and value for each other and for the platform as an ecosystem. And at the same time, there's kind of this world, this world, uh, the scalability that will allow us to jump from kind of the basic and, and allow us to jump into a new model very quickly. And this will be really the key of any platform because it will kind of create and allow this, uh, this asymmetrical growth in a sense that this platform ecosystem will kind of create complementary markets and kind of another um, uh, chance of development uh, that may also allow to develop sideline opportunities. And the last part is, of course, uh, how there is this chance to have this horizontal communication and collective uh, intelligence, since we will have a lot of um, effortless interaction uh, and analysis that will come along um, across the dots, and that will basically will create this kind of new business and consumer expectation. So, of course, this sounds great. This sounds uh, really something huge. Um, and it's really a pleasure, of course, as a platform product manager to, to be part of this ecosystem. But of course, this also brings um, a lot of challenge and also brings um, a little bit of additional kind of responsibility to have things together and to build our products. So what I try to bring here, it's a little bit, what are the most common challenge that we have as a platform product PMs and really how to try to tackle them. And to be very honest, it's really a try. Um, it's, it's 
um, it's a view on some tips how to to kind of overcome some of this challenge but i guess this um, this needs of course to be seen in terms of context and in terms of an um, ecosystem that we are in, in, uh, working with so the first kind of tip uh, and challenge that i bring here is uh, the challenge that um, in our job we really need to understand the big picture and aim for an holistic view and, and if we if we look and end quoting directly um, John Maeda in the book From Laws of Complexity, one of the laws that he mentioned is really that knowledge makes everything simpler. So of course this is really easy to say, um, but as a as a platform product manager, we really should seek for that knowledge and the first things first right so let's try always to understand the basics from the basics here about the informal organization how things work how things work informally how people relate how 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 things influence each other and um, until the basics about the platform architecture and um, it's it's true that we work in a product area and we don't need of course to be tech experts or architecture experts uh, but we need to understand the basics of how things relate and how things influence because it will certainly help also um, in in the other conversation and i guess also very related with this kind of point that knowledge makes everything simpler it's the the part in terms of don't be afraid to ask. There aren't ever stupid questions. I guess if there's one thing that uh, I learned in the in the last year, it's really that doing smart questions it's actually very hard and it's almost an art. So we really should try to improve it and keep asking questions and keeping better in asking questions because probably the questions that we are having are the questions that most of the people also have it. So there's two ways. Probably they are doing the questions because they are in the same position and, as you, or they are doing the question because they are thinking how to formulate those. So really, there's, there's here a chance to, to learn from it. The second dot here, it's, of course, we need to understand and we need to ask questions. But at the same time, we need to listen, to listen and we listen we need to listen everyone kind of wisely and connecting the dots um, and um, someone told me some years ago that one of the kind of main um, positive points that we can find in the product manager is really kind of the art of listening and i guess this is really true because we kind of understand the context where we are and how can we act also upon kind of what the others are are saying and really saying, I guess, that's, that's kind of the, the, the true meaning of it. And the third part, it's really kind of, I'd say, a more personal uh, tip, but really create a group of people that you can trust, learn, and rely on them. So probably uh, in our daily lives and in our professional lives, we will be working in a lot of projects. We will work in a lot of different teams. Um, and of course, people come and go and kind of projects and point of views are part of uh, decisions that you will be uh, kind of part of that organization. But if you have a group of people you can trust, learn and rely on, at the end of the day, you can always kind of come to that group and really kind of connect the dots and understand how things works together. And, and really make those relations out of the projects, out of kind of the, the groups that you are part. Um, and, and that's a thing that I consider very important to, to have kind of this notion of a big picture. The second point, it's the challenge about stakeholders. So this one is a very known one. As a platform product manager, probably, we will be managing a lot of kind of different stakeholders at the same time um, and uh, we will be managing different kind of stakeholders from customer and really the business 
um, and to other product managers, to other obviously areas of the company from design, tech, architecture. So in this point, I, I, I'd say that it's very important to allow everyone to work collaboratively. Uh, so um, it's also part of making them part of the problem. So attending meetings, scheduled deep dive sessions, it's all part of that syncing process. And it's also a way to, to allow people to be part of the equation and um, not to be so concerned about really managing that. The other part is really about transparency and the definition of ways of working. Of course, that when dealing with stakeholders, there's probably a kind of a line uh, in between what we can say or we can't say or how to say it. But it's very important also to bring this layer of transparency to the relationship and allow kind of what is the contract and the way of work that people will kind of want to deal. And we have here an uh, image of Dr. Strangelove, and I, I'd say it's we should always be part of the, the same table, right? We always want kind of to, to choose the direction and let's bring those people into the same table and have that, um, that decision and that uh, direction uh, together. The third point is the challenge about um, some lonely times. So some platform challenge starts um, sometimes as a, as a lonely idea, and it will be up to us kind of to spread those, socialize, and really bring people to the discussion. So here we have kind of only one is a wanderer. So if we have two together, they are always going somewhere. And I think this is really kind of the motto that we can bring to, to, to the company or into the project that we are working. Kind of bring that idea and really talk about that idea, mention it, allow others to build on it, feel for it. So um, an idea is something that has energy, that has motion. So allows the others to feel it. The other part is also allows the other to have the context of idea. How that idea came? Uh, what is the problem that we are trying to solve? How do you see this evolve in the future? So the concept is that obviously the past and future tenses are the ones that give sense to the present. And if we kind of pass this kind of emotion and energy to the others, they will feel the same. So they will be part of that equation and they will want to, to, to be part of um, the change. And in third part, it's more kind of a reflection in terms of allowing time to, for that thinking process. So it is okay that the act of syncing doesn't directly produce something that we give to the customers. And here I'm, I'm quoting uh, Melissa Perry in the build uh, the trap. And the idea is that this is really the starting point of everything. So the syncing process is something that is really up to the product manager and we should dedicate really time to this. The third point is that while we are, of course, dedicating time, we are building a future vision, vision and we can try, at least fake, uh, that we are ignoring time. So the idea really is that as a platform product manager, and I would say really as a, as a product manager working in the product discipline, it's up to us also to think kind of big and allow us to dream about the vision that we want to build. Of course, there will be always a strategy that we are aiming, there's there's always kind of some direction that we will be following or driving, but it's it's up to us also to kind of build this dream or kind of this think big about where we want to land. So the best projects are really the ones that give us kind of this butter plant in the stomach, and let's let's keep it alive. I would say. And the second part is really let go the part that we can't control because, okay, as a product manager, we will be always thinking about where we want to land, what is kind of the dream, but then we will always have kind of all the project manager and kind of business and client timeline saying that 
um, this needs to happen this time, or there was this kind of MVP, or this will be divided in three parts that will fall into the roadmap. So they will take eventually. They, um, they will eventually take care of the the timing thing. So let us kind of have some time to think and build this future vision um, at a bigger scale. The five point, it's really about not getting lost in communication. So I guess that even when we were mentioning the point before, of course, that um, we need to, to think big and bring others to kind of our struggle or into our kind of um, uh, journey. Um, communication, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of the most important thing. And the idea is that we need to communicate, communicate, communicate well, communicate in the right way. So again, and I've already mentioned this point before, it's really important to give context to everyone. Please remember that kind of uh, the topic that for you is the main topic is not someone else, someone else's main topic. So please always kind of give that context to anyone and allows them also to give space to absorb kind of the problem and kind of the 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 pro the the idea that you are trying to face. The other part, and I guess probably this is the most important in terms of communication, uh, at least from my experience. Of course, I'm not a specialist in communication at all. Is that it's really important to understand the main paradigms and ways of working. Um, and kind of relate with the other person. So I would say that a, a good communication always or just works if the other really acknowledge the message and he kind of creates a relationship and do something when acknowledging that message. And um, other way, I, I can always say that I'm communicating, but uh, if the other one is not acknowledged, we are kind of having autism conversation or of parallel world conversation, which is not very interesting. So probably some tips that can help on this part, it's really kind of establish a communication contract with kind of the customer, with our colleagues. And this can be kind of a communication for tech teams or for the customer that use particular kind of terms and really kind of um, define what is the format that we want to, to take, what is the level of detail, what are kind of the ceremonies of the, of the inter interaction. And at the end, really put together a glossary that works. And this can be internal, it can be external. It can be things as, um, if I'm talking with the tech team, I will mention kind of ceremonies or kind of artifacts. Uh, but if I'm talking with kind of design teams, I will be probably mentioning kind of design system. So there are kind of languages, parallel languages that happen around us. And it's, it's really important to try to get into those. And even when we are kind of at level of communication and we are kind of really um, creating and generating kind of input output it's really important always to document everything so i guess sometimes and this is really a challenge that i i i think it's very common uh, in between us it was like what was really the decision that we took the other day and why i guess we've decided something like that was really your understanding and i think here we have probably uh, two two main potential problems one is that probably the other part didn't understand the same as you. So on that part, we have kind of a communication problem. And the second part is that if you don't document, you will never get into kind of that communication and documentation equation. So really being contest, contest, uh, sorry, being contest to contact with your colleagues, even if it's kind of about minor change, even if it's about minor scope change, if, uh, even if it's about adding some to the scope, it's really important to have kind of um, this aggregated view. And also document not only kind of the final version, but keep always the old version and kind of the reasons for 
the decision because probably uh, you will go back to these old versions and really understand the, the why and what and how. And then uh, again, the idea of contract, establish a documentation contact, contract beside the communication one. So what are the formats, what is the level of detail, um, what is kind of the recurrency that you will review that recommendation. The seven point is, I would say, kind of a point that we really need to recognize. So I think we've covered that, of course, we need to understand the kind of the end-to-end -end view. And then we were saying that we will need to kind of work in the communication piece. We need to uh, have all these parts in terms of documenting things. But there will be a part of the process, even if you've done all the thinking process right, even if you dedicate the time and really thought very carefully and wisely in what you are doing, there will be times where you will have kind of some, um, some uh, disruption moments in terms of thinking and in terms of uh, ideas when, when working with other people, because other people also represent, of course, different backgrounds, and this represents kind of different point of views. And, and uh, actually looking into this image, the, the way I'm seeing the other is not the way the other, the, the other is seeing me. So of course, this represents, um, first, uh, this represents a common place to everyone. Uh, but that's really important. So um, the idea of putting ourselves in our customer's shoes is important, but that's on our colleagues' shoes too. So I guess to understand really the motivation, what moves that other team or that person is the innovation that is the driver, is kind of more organization and structure, commitment and roadmap, big achievements. So really try to understand that will help you um, in, in understanding also how to manage these backgrounds. And second point, I say it's really to acknowledge that different point of views may represent really contradictory point of views. And that's not bad, actually. And quoting here Roger Martin from The Possible Mind, um, it really says that kind of the idea to hold to conflicting ideas in a constructive tension, which is kind of a nice term, uh, represents an intellectually advantageous evolutionary leap uh, that can also help the decision-making process. So what we're saying here is that there's a way, um, and in theory, there's a way to go. But if we can also kind of collect this kind of conflicting ideas and really make some good of it and really kind of work in this constructive uh, tension, probably we will even go a step further. The eight point is really the acceptance part. So what we're saying is that at some point in our platform product, um manager life things will be chaotic and will be chaotic and wind will blow in one way and we will trying to go to the other way but the point is that that's fine that's fine that everything is chaotic and we just need to accept chaos and there will always be things that we won't be in control but again that's fine and i guess my last point is that um, if we accept chaos, and, that, uh, and that's kind of uh, a, a truly good feeling, and if we do our job well, actually, there is never an end in this product life cycle and in this product life. And here, just for, for out of curiosity, uh, I have this Im image from uh, these design houses uh, in Chile, and I think it really represents um kind of the work of a platform manager who, because we are really saying that we are building something very prepared for scalability right because i'm already saying i know i will be adding something i know there will be some future for this i know that i will want to pursue this but at the same time 
um, it isn't finished, right? So there's always work to do. There's always some progress to 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 come after. There's always something to improve. So I guess that's that that can sometimes be kind of um, a bitter taste feeling. But I, I guess this is really kind of the joy of being a, a platform product manager. It's kind of really the potential of continuing to build things uh, and really evolving the, the equation. And, and I think that's, that's basically it what I, I wanted to, to share with you. Thank you so much, I guess. Um, it was really a pleasure to share kind of uh, part of this this challenge. Hope some of these tips make make sense to you. And um, otherwise, also feel free to to contact me. Also, feel free to kind of disagree, raise some tips, kind of share um, additional thoughts with you. And uh, I guess uh, again, thank you so much. It was it was really a pleasure.